Today on Lab Talks, we're going to talk about stem cells and pee. Yes, I said pee, and how scientists here at Sheba are using it for personalized medicine and how to repair damaged kidneys. You're in for a treat. <laughs> Thank you, Professor Dekel, for welcoming us into your lab. Um, so my first question to you is, who are you and what do you do here at Chiba? So first of all, I'm Benny, not Professor Dekel. Um, so I have several hats here at Chiba. One would be uh, the Chief of Pediatric Nephrology, that's uh, kids with uh, renal disease. Uh, I also head a research institute, it's the Pediatric Stem Cell Research Institute. Uh, I have academic heads, so I'm the Vice Dean of uh, uh, Research Innovation of the Medical School at Tel Aviv University. And um, I'm heading the, the Regen Med Lab here at the Sheba Medical Center. Tell me a little bit about why your work here at Sheba is so unique. Yeah, sure. So I'm a, you know, a clinician, clinician scientist, but the thrust for my research comes from the clinical world. Two major issues, you know, treating kids and adults with uh, chronic kidney disease, epidemic in the Western world, you know, huge amounts of uh, patients. And the other would be pediatric kidney cancer. So these, I would say, from, you know, from the clinical point are, you know, uh, really burning clinical issues that we need to find and discover therapies for. So this is, you know, my clinical hat, seeing kids and solving their disease in the lab. I love this both worlds uh, um, which I can, you know, um, know the language of. Because, you know, the medical language is one thing, the scientific language is another thing, and we need to combine these languages. Yep. So tell me a little bit about what the difference is, what the different challenges are between treating chronic kidney disease versus kidney cancer. We look at kidney disease from the perspective of the stem cell right, of regenerative medicine. We're trying to regenerate, to make new. And I think this is a revolution, you know, to make new tissue. The basis for making new tissue is the stem cell, because the stem cells are the ones that build the tissue. Now, there are good stem cells, which build the tissue rightfully and, you know, generate a healthy tissue. There are bad stem cells which are transformed, you know, stem cells that have gone to the wrong side and they have mutations that generate cancer. So we, on one hand, you have the good stem cells, which you want to build the organ from, in our case, the kidney. On the other hand, you have a bad stem cell residing in kidney cancers that you want to eliminate, target it, and uh, get rid of the cancer. So everything is from the perspective of the stem cell, you know, our work. So let's start from the very beginning then, as you do with stem cells, right? Stem cells are the very beginning, the first cell. Uh, you have several different types of stem cells, right? This is a, a great question. So you think about stem cells, you have the analogy of a baby growing up. Where you're a baby, you have lots of potential, right? You're a totipotent, pluripotent stem cells. You can become anything you want. Baker, doctor, fireman, physicist. And then you show some type of commitment. For instance, you go into art school. So you're more committed into arts, but you have potency for different types of professions within the art world. You can be a painter, a dancer, performance artist, so forth. And then you become more committed because you go only into music, but still you have some potency to become a drummer or a flute player. But then you become committed into flute and you lose your potency and there you're a mature self. So what I described within the baby growing up is the same sort of characteristics we see in stem cell research and the different types of stem cells going from totipotent to pluripotent to multipotent to uripotent. I think stem cells are amazing. 
this is a pluripotent stem cells which we can generate kidneys from, a kidney organoid from. This is one type of stem cells. What we're very keen on are tissue stem cells. Tissue stem cells are the ones that reside within the, 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 you know, the, the organ. For instance, the fetal kidney or the adult kidney. Now, they're not pluripotent. They're just multipotent. They know how to generate kidney tissue. They don't know anything else. So we were actually the first group to identify kidney stem cells, human kidney stem cells in fetal kidneys. We were among the first to um, define kidney stem cells in the adult kidney. And we use these building uh, cells or building blocks to generate uh, new tissue. Now, within kidney cancers, these stem cells are, you know, mutated and they generate cancer. So this is, this is something bad. Mm -hmm. So the two types of stem cells that we use are pluripotent stem cells where you need to generate what you want to generate, kidney in our field, or you use directly, um, you use tissue stem cells, kidney stem cells, which know only uh, how to build a kidney. And what is it that you can do in general with stem cells? Our lab has been using stem cells for two major um, indications. One is, of course, to regenerate or generate new tissue, because if you have a kidney stem cell, you need to expand it. What does that mean? You need to cultivate it and grow the number of cells ex vivo in the Petri dish. What's the relevance of five cells? You know, you need a, if you want to regenerate, you want to create a new organ, you need to get a lot of cells. How many cells? The more cells, the better. We've been doing a lot of um, human kidney stem cell transplantation into murine hosts, mm -hmm. not into humans yet. And so murine hosts are yeah, mice? Are, yeah, mice. And there we use like a half a million cells, you know, but the rule of thumb for adults would be one million cells per kilo. So, you know, so you need a lot of cells. You That's need like a, a 100 cells. million cells for, um, you know, regenerating a kidney. So definitely this step of cultivating, expanding the number of cells in vitro is crucial. And then they need also, once you do this cultivating expansion phase, you need to, you know, they need to retain their identity. If they, some, if they become something else ex vivo, they're useless. Hmm. So we need to keep them as kidney stem cells in the Petri dish. And if we do keep them as kidney stem cells in the Petri dish, we can use them for regeneration transplantation, cell therapy, you know, we can even bioengineer um, some, you know, part of an organ ex vivo and then transplant it. Mm -hmm. But this would be your starting material. Another big field we're in is not transplanting these kidney stem cells to generate new tissue, but rather model disease. Now, to model kidney disease or to model any disease, again, the cells need to be close to what there are in reality, in vivo. For that, we generate uh, kidney organoids and kidney spheroids. And the, what is a kidney spheroid? It's a way to culture the cells in three dimension. And this is crucial. The monolayers, the cells that are cultivated in 2D, in two dimensions, actually do not retain their kidney stem cell behavior or function. Mm -hmm. They sort of forget their kidney stem cells, you know, forget their identity, you know, leave home, forget about home. <laughs> but if you do that, and this is, if you do that in 3D, the cells expand and they retain their kidney stem cell identity. So you can cultivate the cells and they're still relevant after you expand the number of cells. And then you have these mini kidneys in the dish. We can really cultivate these 3D uh, kidney organoids and spheroids and show that they retain really characteristics. If it's from the adult kidney, it's the adult kidney. From the fetus, the fetal kidney. Or, you know, you can really show you have, you have a similar lineages, similar cell lineages in these kidney organoids. So you have these mini kidneys in vitro growing in your Petri dish. Nephrons or? So uh, I want to explain that. It depends on what stem cell you use to generate the kidney organoid. Mm -hmm. If you generate the very early stem cell, as I said, the pluripotent stem cell, and you generate a kidney organoid, it has most of the nephron structures in it because mm -hmm. it's from the beginning and you get the kidney organoids growing. 
you see the proximal tube, you see the distal tube, mm -hmm. and you see podocyte. This is a cell that is responsible for filtration, different parts of the kidney. This is uh, our terminology. Now, if you use the adult or the fetal kidney stem cells, usually the organoids retain less cell types, but uh, what they retain is very uh, prominent in its you know, capacity for disease modeling. You can take a sample of a kidney from anyone, hmm. and we do that from urine. You take a patient with, with genetic kidney disease, you can take, uh, uh, as I said, the urine, get the cells, the kidney stem cells out of the urine, hmm. expand them, and build one's own mini kidney organoid in the dish. Now, this kidney organoid has the genetic defect Right. That it, that the patient harbors, so you can you know actually you don't need mice anymore. You can model its disease in vitro. You can analyze the disease. You can really you know do any kind of analysis on understanding the mechanism of disease, but also apply drugs to these organoids and see what makes these organoids. If you have a functional essay, what these make make these organoids better, and this can be translated to the patient. So we do a lot of sort of uh, um, disease modeling using organoids for drug discovery. So not only regenerative medicine, also organoids, disease modeling, and um, drug discovery for specific disease. And this is, you know, this relates to so many ethnic groups. It's so cool. You know, we have, uh, you know, we're starting a collaboration with the uh, United Emirates. And, you know, they have specific genetic traits in the United Emirates. So mm. we can study their, you know, they just need, they need to bring us urine. And we can study their, you know, build their kidney organoids and study their disease in the lab. Wow. Uh, yeah. And, you know, we can do it, of course, from Israel, from, uh, you know, uh, Jews, um, ethnic groups, uh, Muslim, you know, Hasidic groups, which have specific genetic traits. You know, w when I think about, uh, you know, you know, gathering uh, the Middle East together. We can do it from a medical point of view, you know, with really unraveling specific diseases and ethnic groups and applying specific drugs and, you know, helping out everyone. That's amazing. We'll get, we'll come back to that in just a second. But first of all, I had no idea that when we pee, we basically shed stem cells. I had no idea that there were stem cells in my pee, which I think is fascinating. Yeah, I think, Useful you know, stem cells, right? Yeah, I mean... <laughs> What I want to tell you is, you know, go to the toilet, you know, give us some urine. It's amazing. We've been working on it very uh, comprehensively as we understood that, um, you know, th the kidney constantly sheds, shed cells, you know, into the urine. Mm -hmm. These are difficult to culture cells, okay? They're not, they're not easy. Uh, and we needed to come up with specific protocols and molecules that would help us cultivate the cells, the kidney stem cells from the urine, and again, expand their number to generate kidney organoids and spheroids for regeneration and disease modeling. Mm -hmm. You have to dive in, and we understood what would be uh, specific molecules that can expand these uh, urine-derived kidney stem cells, and we discovered them, and now we have this very strong protocol for derivation of these urine-derived kidney stem cells to generate organoids. This is also a basis of a company we founded Mm -hmm. uh, at Sheba, this is a venture coming coming out of uh, uh, Sheba Medical Center called Renovate, which uses uh, urine for both, you know, for generating uh, kidney organoids, for regeneration, for disease modeling, and also for, you know, generating prognosis on your on your kidney. Because you know, wow. this kidney organoid can tell a lot about your the status of your uh, kidney without doing a biopsy. Wow. So that's um, that's Renovate Bio, which is a spin-off of our technology uh, through, um, through the Shiba Medical Center uh, uh, TTO. So what is this uh, company enabling you to do? So Renovate Biopharmaceuticals took our technology, our basic technology, what it enables us to do is really translate our basic findings to, um, to patients. And this is cool because they're set up at the ABC, at the Biotherapy uh, Center. And what's which ABC? Is, this is, um, these are the clean labs at Chiba, which are actually set for startup companies that, uh, you know, are spin-offs academic labs. So I have the academic lab here, and the um, spin-off, Renovate Bio, is not far away. So we can really um, 
appreciate you know how things move from the academic lab to venture world and the, and the startups. We aim at bio uh, at uh, renovate um, you know to get into patients within uh, two years you know to use our technology with the you know with the urine derived kidney spheroids for uh, kidney regeneration, which is um, very very cool. So truly from yeah. bench. To bedside. Yeah, we have additional examples of bench to bench sites because, as I said at the beginning, you know, we discovered, um, you know, the bad stem cells, the cancer stem cells in a pediatric kidney tumor called Wilms tumor. And once we defined it, we had, once you define a cell, you have sort of the biomarkers on the cell. This is cancer stem cells, a bad stem cell. And we, we collaborated with, um, with a group that generated a missile targeting these, you know, it's an antibody drug conjugate. It's an antibody that is linked to chemotherapy, and these antibody drug conjugates treated, uh, targeted the cancer stem cells, and this actually went into a phase two clinical trial uh, based on our discoveries in the lab of uh, what are bad stem cells in a pediatric uh, kidney tumor. So I've been, I've been there and the feeling is, is tremendous once your basic academic ideas are translated into patients. This is you know, a, a dream of every physician scientist and I guess every scientist. Yeah.